All right, so we're here at DevOx doing live streaming, and now I have with me Stuart Marks and Brian Getz, and we're gonna we're gonna have a little informal discussion about lambdas. Um, if you're watching the live stream at nighthacking.com, pop open and chat, and feel free to ask us questions about um, issues you've had with lambdas or syntax gotchas or anything else, because I found Brian is. Um, irreplaceable in terms of just having all of the Lambda constructs in his brain and immediate response time with, with answers which are more right than what I come up with <laughs> when I try doing this. So um, first, let's introduce Brian. You want to say a little about yourself? Yeah, so my name is Brian Getz. I'm the Java language architect. Uh, I've been at Sun slash Oracle for the last eight years or so, um, and for the last uh, three, three and a half years, I've been working on adding Lambdas to Java. So this has been pretty much what I've been eating and breathing last uh, last two years. <laughs> All right, Stu. Hi, my name's Stuart Marks. I work on the uh, core libraries team on the JDK and OpenJDK, and I work with Brian on Lambdas in addition to doing uh, a bunch of other stuff around the libraries. Okay, so we'll we'll start this out. I'll, I'll start with some softball questions and we'll see where things go with this. So um, one, of the, one of the things I've, I've noticed is there's a lot of conclusion we, confusion when you talk about lambdas because it's both a language feature and it's also API changes. And in my opinion, the API changes are actually in a lot of cases more important than the language feature, even though you need the language feature to, to have the API changes. So what what are your thoughts on, on the APIs in the Java libraries? Yeah, so the way we look at it is language features are not an end unto themselves. You know, language features are enablers. Um, and a feature like Lambda enables a lot of good things to happen. It enables us to write better libraries. It enables us to expose parallelism in a more natural way. Um, but the, um, the libraries are what the users are going to be interacting with on a daily basis. You know, one of Java's strengths has been its libraries. We have lots of great libraries for doing nearly everything. Um, and in a sense, like the libraries aren't an end unto them themselves either, right? Really what we want is for people to be able to write clearer, cleaner, easier to read, less error prone code. And so there's this sort of like chain of uh, conspiracy here where we add the language feature so that people can write better libraries. We write better libraries so that people can write better code. And that's really what we're, tr what, what we're aiming at. Okay, so if you could give advice, you, you mentioned other people writing libraries. If you could give advice to people who are picking up lambdas and thinking about trying to adapt or create new APIs with lambdas, what would you, <laughs> what would you recommend? So you know, one of the big challenges. Um, is your, so, so, so next question is yours, Stu. Okay. okay. <laughs> One, one of the, so so we, we, we've delivered one major new uh, API in Java 8, which is the Streams API. So this is the API we're using for bulk, uh, bulk operations on collections. So you can do you know, MapReduce type operations on existing collections. And there was a pretty significant API design effort that we went through. And you know, we, we went through quite a number of iterations of the API before we found the right way to do it. So it's, even though lambdas are a feature for writing better APIs, they don't guarantee that your APIs will be better. You can write terrible APIs using lambdas just as easily as, uh, as without. Um, and you know, so, so, so one of the things that we leaned on really heavily is um, encouraging people to express things as functional transformations. Uh, that the, uh, the lambdas that you pass into a library should be pure functions that don't have side effect, they don't have state, um, and uh, at, if this is a bit of a shift uh, for the way Java programmers program, so we found that it was not enough simply to write these APIs, but we sort of had to give people a lot of examples of, you know, here's the way you might be inclined to write it at first, but actually here's a better way and here's why this way is better and let people absorb why, why that's better. And I think it's going to take a little while for people to get the, uh, the hang of it, but it's, it'll be a fun trip. Okay. All right. Stu, Stu's turn. Yeah, I wanted to add to that. Of course, everything, everything Brian said is, is very, very true. Um, but when we're designing new APIs with, with Lambda, I think, I think there's a learning process to be done there as well. 
Um, I think the Streams API evolved quite a bit over the past year and a half or so, something about, like that. About that. Yeah, and so part of it was, I mean, just, just playing with it and evolving it and so forth. Uh, in talking to people about Lambdas, I was soliciting ideas from people just in conferences and casual conversation. And what keep, kept coming up was, oh, wow, if you had Lambda, you could put a for each on this. You could put a for each on this, because it's, it's kind of the easiest thing to understand. And, well, yeah, right, but, but it's sort of, it's, it's the first thing everybody comes up with, and we've done some of those, right? So you can do for each on a collection and pass it to Lambda, and that's, and that's a fine thing to do. But there's so much more, and, and so you, one is kind of a failure of imagination. You have to break out of the notion of, well, if I have a collection of things or an abstract collection of things, just for each over it. There's so much more to do. There's sort of, there, there are other things that are a slight step away, like an execute around pattern. Uh, that that's amenable to Lambda. We could build some more of those in. There's this there's this um, reactive programming stuff with with you know promises or completable future as it's uh, as it's spelled in Java. Uh, so you can you can start plugging Lambdas into things like that and and really come up with new constructs that we haven't seen before. And and we're all exploring that now. So we have to open our imaginations and try to come up with better APIs that that we just couldn't think of before we had Lambda. And, and, and one thing to add to that is, you know, historically Java has been focused on abstractions about data, right? So we have um, inheritance where you can say, you know, a dog is a special case of an animal, um, and that's mostly about the state of, uh, you know, um, you know, of, 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 of the object as, as opposed to its behavior. Um, we have generics that allow you to uh, abstract over a list of something. I'm not going to tell you what it's a list of, but here are the things that are common to all lists. Uh, Java hasn't historically done as good a job as at abstracting over behavior. And so now that we have lambdas, it becomes easier to write APIs that abstract over behavior, not just do this thing for every element of the list, but do this before you start, do this after you're done. If you run into an error condition, do this, and, and sort of pass in these snippets of behavior and let the library orchestrate the control. And that's, that's uh, a really powerful thing. Okay, so it almost sounds like um there could be a renaissance of new frameworks and um, APIs and libraries which are built specifically for use cases with lambdas where previously it was not syntactically elegant or easy to um, to see what the flow of the program was previously. Yeah. Um, so what's your, what would be your favorite library you'd like to see <laughs> besides the ones which have already been lambdaized? What, what's your favorite library that you'd like to see be given a um, a stateless or a, or a callback or a lambdaized pattern. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have a favorite library, but what I'm what I'm doing is kind of keeping my eyes open for opportunities to upgrade existing libraries. And so, so for instance, yesterday we had this hacker garden session about um, about lambda, and I really had. Well, I didn't say I had no ideas. I had nothing but just a handful of ideas. And one of the things that has been on my, in the back of my mind for a long time is if you've ever done any user interface programming, you, there's swing, swing utilities.invokeLater, where you're on some thread and you want to get something performed on the event thread. Historically, that's taken a runnable. You can, use, you can use a Lambda with that today, and that's fine, but you cannot return a value from it. And so you, you have to stand on your head if you want to get something run on the event thread and return a value. And so what we need is a new API that doesn't take a runnable, but instead takes a supplier, which is a functional interface that returns a value. And then actually, just be, for reasons of uh, flow control, control flow, excuse me, uh, we actually want that to return a future. So uh, Sven Reimers and I hacked that up yesterday. So we have a prototype and an API and stuff, and I, I should uh, I think I owe some some more publicity to that. But I think that's that's a that's a very important point because when you the the API there there is an API there and you can use it with Lambda, but it's in it's inadequate, and so we need to upgrade things like that. Uh, and there you know there I'm sure there you know as we work with things now that we have a better idea of what we can do with Lambda as you use the, the you know, day-to-day -day existing libraries. We keep stumbling across things. Oh, if only this had another API that took a Lambda and did that. And I think that's gonna come up a lot over the next year. So that's kind of what I'm on. And, and a lot of that has already started, that um, if you look at the APIs that have been developed, at least in the JDK 
over the last year or two, like the JSR 310 Daytime API or the Java FX APIs, you know, they, the, the guys designing these APIs, they saw where the language was going and they knew that this was going to be an important thing. Um, and so they were careful to design things so that, uh, yes, today maybe you have to do with inner classes, but when, you know, uh, you know, when JDK 8 is out, it will work nicely with lambdas. And so people have already been thinking about this. And, and I, I expect we'll see once, um, once JDK finally goes GA, which is, we would like to be tomorrow, but you know, is, is uh, still a few months away, uh, I, th I think you'll start to see a lot more energy, you know, people building cool stuff. And I, I, I've seen a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of people tweeting about uh, test frameworks using lambdas and te yeah. testing is a great, you know, great example of something that lambdas makes easier to, to do. So I think that we're going to see a lot of creativity. Yeah, I actually back in the day I wrote a um, behavior-driven development framework for JavaFX script. I remember that. I, <laughs> I saw your talk about that uh, here a couple of years ago. So that that's something which you could actually do, like you know, with yeah. the Lambda interface and make a more readable syntax than you can today, just doing it in pure Java code with the current BDD frameworks. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So talking about hacking, you were mentioning that you and Sven were hacking. Um, this is also a good time to announce that we, we're going to, um, this is the beginning of what we're going to continue in January as the first episode of a, um, of a regular um, bi-monthly hack program. So um, for the first episode, I've invited um, Brian and Stu to, to be our, um, our resident interviewees and, and hacker leaders and um, got interest from the NL Jug, the B Jug, um, the guys in Germany. Um, who else am I missing? The LJC and oh, Iceland. <laughs> the Iceland jug is also going to be joining us um, for a, a live hack session where we'll be both showing presentations on lambdas and giving people the foundation of what they need to do with it, going through some lab content, which um, Stu and the team has put together to really teach you lambdas, and then also doing some hacking where we can get direct feedback from, from Brian and Stu on what the, you know, a lot of cases, my, my feeling is when you're starting out with lambdas, you, you it takes a few tries before you really get comfortable and you find the right patterns for things. And once you see the end result, it's obvious. You're just like, oh, oh, of course I should I should do a map and a fold and blah 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 blah. blah. But until you until you get comfortable with the APIs, you end up doing weird things like for eaching and then passing in big long lambdas, which do way too much work and are stateful and it's. Ugh. So it would be good to have you guys show some good patterns, but also troubleshoot some things which people might not easily be able to, to tell just on the cuff. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and we've, we've done a number of um, you know, hack days in various cities um, you know, during the development of the feature to get uh, feedback from people. And it's really fun. It's really fun to watch people you know, start experimenting with this and say, wow, this is easy. Oh, it's worked exactly the way I thought. I didn't think this was going to work, but it did. And, you know, and it's, it's fun. Yeah, I think there's there's a certain amount of that going on. I think we'll continue that in in January. But but what's what started to happen is on on Twitter. Remember that Twitter exchange we had with with somebody where you said, "I wish there were an API that did this." You know, can we can we add that? And your response was, "Oh, uh, actually, if you combine this API and that API a different way, you can do it in one line." And so so in a sense, it's already there, yeah. right? And so so part of it is we have a we have an existing rich API, not not only the streams API, but we sort of sort of laminified or streamified a lot of the, the existing JDK libraries. But there's a long learning process for putting, you know, putting those pieces together. It's very rich, and the, the way that things can be combined is is pretty uh, uh, pretty significant. Um, and then, uh, so you had an interaction with Kirk Pepperdine at yeah. Ordev, and so he, he actually has a blog post recently within the past couple days where you know he 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 bumped this into some stuff and he said oh, I don't know about this right. And then then talked to you about it and said, oh, that's the way to do it. And it you know, out popped this perfect solution. And, uh, and I, I don't know if I've had exactly the same experiences, but you know, people say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm trying to solve this and it's not right working. Oh, well, just do uh, reduce such and so, such and so. And it, boom, out pops a nice solution. So there's this learning process that I think everybody has to go through to figure out how to use the stuff that's there effectively. And it's not always obvious, um, but the pieces do fit together very well. And, and there is this definite sense of, you know, uh, it, it, maybe what you were looking for wasn't obvious, but then someone sees the right answer, and then that's obviously the right answer, and that's really satisfying. 
All right, cool. So um, actually, a bunch of folks have joined us on the stream. So um, it's, it's excellent that folks are tuning in for the live stream. But this will also be on the uh, Night Hacking site, nighthacking.com, and Parlays if you want to watch it later. And I want to thank you guys for hopping on short notice to do a quick interview. So Thanks, appreciate it. Yep. Thanks, and enjoy the rest of the DevOps conference.